actually like the original version of Silent Stream Chaser over GP Legends. Very cool. Welcome back to another lap of To Be Married and Loved. Last time, they have actually, Tinsel and Rick have actually met up with Taya Gardiner from the classic Yu-Gi-Oh! series. And she was ach achieving her lifelong dream as a ballet dancer since this took place years after they graduated high school. And they've actually paid their respects with the Yugi to say goodbye to Atem. Yeah, the Millennium Puzzle was dismantled and Yami actually had his very last duel with Diva, which was the event for the Dark Side of Dimensions. And Atem, along with Kaiba, but the dust. So they transfer their souls to the netherworld. And Tinsel didn't know. She thought Atem would still be around to participate in the wedding. But, yeah, this was a very tragic loss to them. And after that, they met up with Taya, who was a ballet dancer in Mute City. From Domino City, actually. So, Taya actually gave them advice on how to use invites for the wedding. And, of course, Super Arrow barged in. He got wind of it somehow. And he actually wanted to participate. Bad. Ay, you know how annoying Super Arrow is. At least he's better than Captain Quark, that's for sure. So... The wedding is drawing closer and closer as they know it. So let's get this started. Alright, lap three. Rick and Tinsel split up to cover more ground, and the RSVPs were, getting, were being sent out. He first visited Planet Krypton to deliver the invitations to Goro and his family. Fortunately, he held his band of thieves at bay as they wanted to steal his advanced machine. I'm warning you, Sensei, that the Galaxy Platoon would be watching your every move, and I would highly suggest you arrive discreetly using your F-Zero machines instead of your spacecrafts. He was referring to the Fire Needle and Excellent Queen. Otherwise, they'd be shot down, so it was best to never mess around. The Japanese warrior nodded with a smile. I honor your union, kid. You'd best make sure you would have the Federation's permission. You and me both best not stir up any tension. Ugh, especially with Jody. While the Savior was heading back to Earth just an hour later, the King Meteor unexpectedly followed beside him. Super Arrow couldn't stop begging to be a part of this upcoming wagon wedding. To shut him up, Rick reluctantly gave three of the packages to him as he delivered them to his wife and kid immediately. Zook squawked next to him. Zook is the owl, by the way. Although it's weird because in X, Super Arrow used to own a pet falcon. But in GX and from then on, especially in the anime, he owns an owl. Like, come on, I hate the series' inconsistency. Tinsel had to follow the, her GPS in her silver comet as she had forgotten the way to Domino City. The bustling streets made it more of a challenge to find Yugi's and Solomon's home, though. She gave them eight invitations, and only six of those were for his best friends Joey, his, his best friends Joey, Mokuba, Serenity, Tristan, Tia, and Mai. While she was heading back to Muke City, Rick stopped by the Falcon House and offered Clank to deliver three invitations to Alias's home, as well as their friendly rival, Digiboy. He beamed and accepted them with glee, though he had to write in his dad's red gazelle in order to get to these places. Ugh. At least Clank wouldn't use his, wouldn't hijack another machine like he did in the debut episode, The Boy from Forno. Finally, they rendezvoused back at the Mobile Task Force base, or actually it's called Flashback, and Dr. Stewart offered to deliver the fancy invitations to his kids. Jack would bring one to the high-flying medico's grandson. Still, something was beginning to trouble the bright mind, 
as he was anxious to hear from someone he hadn't seen in years. Someone very distant, elusive, or possibly forever gone from his life. I'll get to that later, but this was an idea from Butscotch. In addition, food preparations had to be requested by the invites. Support Lucy, Elise's mom, Luna, and Stody, Stuart and Jody, they should be an official couple, decided to prepare them by the month before the occasion. To cut cost, Stuart suggested to make a buffet utilizing a, ver a variety of dishes. And to avoid chaos and skyrocketing payments, Jody volunteered it could be a very dry wedding rather than have it served with any alcohol. Although a professional was hired to bake the cake, the couple wasn't sure exactly what flavor it should be, nor did they want any of the festive decor. After a couple weeks, Tinsel eventually decided on something basic as to have the top layer chocolate, the second layer vanilla, and the third layer strawberry. Although it should actually be backwards because the bottom layer is like the most massive. Anyway, Rick admired the simplicity and the deliciousness of her choice. Only the majority of guests accepted, around 97% have returned within a month. As the packages were sent back, Tinsel made a spreadsheet highlighting some of the cells, while others had yet to be answered were left blank. Rick and Tinsel were both surprised that Kate and her midget manager, Gordon, offered to come along and put on a show for this special occasion. You know, Kate Allen? Ugh, Barry Watterson is gonna gush over this. In fact... Rick's key fob began to chirp as Tinsel was looking over the digital repertoire. He picked up the call and there was a cheery voice at the other end. Rick, is that you? Yeah. He then recognized the voice and smiled. Kate! What a surprise! I, I never thought you of all people would be calling me. I never want to miss the chance on performing for you and Tinsel's wedding. Congratulations! Um, yeah... Thanks. Hey, wait! How did you know we were getting married? Who else would have broken the news? EAD did. Oh, that starstruck android. You don't mind if Gordon and I should participate, would you? I've already gotten the invitations mailed to us already. Not at all, Kate. I hope it won't be too much of a burden for you. He can never forget how stern she was when he and his colleagues had to give her 24-hour protection from Zoda after she won the prize money over him. Which is her debut episode, Dangerous Diva, a.k.a. songstress Kate Allen. Ugh. I had a bitter start with her. I, I was turned off by her. I wanted to like her, but I was never crazy about her in the series, not even GX. I don't know why, but something always turned me off, especially her attitude. And also how her fans used to pressure her so much. It was thanks to the friendship and valiance from EAD, as well as this temporary sacrifice that changed her ways. Even though she actually called him a stupid robot. Really, Kate? Really? <clears throat> Couldn't be just more grateful? Anyway, they were still so astounded that Clash was able to restore him, albeit not his memories of Kate. Ugh, if you've seen the episode, you should know that. Of course not. Besides, E.D. and I would be doing some shop- <clears throat> Sorry. Of course not. Besides, E.D. and I would be doing some shopping for our nifty outfits. And we could use some alone time before the big day. You know, just to relax for a while. Although having the possibility of a human mating with an android can be pretty weird, for his stomach was tangled in knots. Ugh, Barry Watterson, you have those outrageous ideas! Still, he replied with a straight face. Sure, okay. Great! I'll see you in October! She sing-songed at the end before she hung up and left Rick speechless. 
Even more shocking was that Jack offered his own former band, Thunderbolt, to join in. I, although, I wish it was highlighted more in the anime, whether it's alternate continuity or not, because Jack used to belong in a band. He was a punk rocker. Like, ugh. It should have been highlighted in the anime, too. Just saying. Rick immediately said yes, as did Luna, and the punk would never mind how much it'll cost him, as brash as he was. What else is new? Since he was his best man, he would be willing to do anything to make Rick's matrimony a memorable one, even to defend him in a brawl. Rick soon asked Tinsel, and she thought that their wedding could take place at the first track from the original F-Zero, the Mute City track. He figured it was unusual, but since it was an old circuit, there wouldn't be any racers to run anything nor anyone over. The latter event would just take place at the other side of the track. Rick then asked where she wants the honeymoon, and she immediately answered it'd be in Port Town Space Harbor. No question, since it was the largest and most advanced in the entire galaxy. At first, Rick was disappointed it won't be at Memory Park, where he was taken Haruka once while he reminisced her enjoying the scenery with a flock of gulls and left heartedly the whole way through. Again, from the anime. Specifically... Specifically, Jody's secret. When they went to the Falcon House for their usual beverage, Rick then asked what Bert's role would be. He said it could be the marriage efficient. Even the server was impressed on... Ugh, darn scrolls. Ugh, it's so annoying. He was impressed on Tinsel's unique choice of their union and reception since it'd be inexpensive as the circuit remains inactive for years. It was actually better than going to any former church, formal church, even occupying it for a reception. And in order to cut costs more, photography would have to be done professionally by a friend, and who knows technology well, say, Clank and Mighty Gazelle? They both unanimously volunteered to take on the task, or better yet, the young tech geek would want to use a little friend of his to do the job proficiently and hands-free. His bot he invented, Tech, and he retorted he would never be willing to invite any of the self-centered children from the foreigner orphanage. Uh, I can't blame him. But I think... I may be confusing him with John Tanaka, but I think he used to have a robot friend, especially when he drives the Dragonbird. And climax. I could be wrong. Rick and Tinsel extended the time limit for any last-minute invitees by giving them all of summer to hear from them, despite retrieving the packages within 30 days. Unfortunately, beat Catherine Gray Lewis Legend from Dark Purveyors, and Catherine Wilson didn't give them back. So much for Cat being the flower girl. This was an original idea, by the way, but it just got too complicated. Dr. Stewart said Kate Kat's address is unknown and is very elusive, though we thought he shouldn't alert his daughter of her whereabouts just yet. With every RSVP retrieved, Stody created a list of each food preference, though kids would have their choices monitored closely, obviously. So, here's what I got so far. For Jody, it was fondue. Wine had to be cut. I hear it was her favorite type of food, by the way, from the anime. For Stuart, it's healthy choices, well-balanced. Tanaka, none. Commissioner, none. Chris is gator? Exotic meat and Mediterranean veggies. Octoman, no calamari or seafood! To be politically correct, the couple accepted to eliminate seafood. Tinsel wasn't too disappointed, and it'll also cut down on costs since fish is highly expensive. I am a huge seafood lover, despite it being expensive, but eh. Hey, what do you expect? Octoman is an octopus. It's a cephalopod, so no calamari. <laughs> 
All right, for PJ, it's the exotic mangoes, the same ones that Alias prefers. I forgot their names. I guess you can look it up on the F-Zero wiki. For Gordon, Kate's manager, would be ramen noodles with small meatballs. Gomor and Shio, artichoke, cooked chestnuts. Jack, anything spicy. Ugh, he's so brash. They decided a variety of sauces would be put aside, such as hot sauce, buffalo, teriyaki, soy, and barbecue. For Luna Stewart, it would be butterscotch pie, based on the author's name. For Rodney, same as his dad, healthy choices. Lucy, carrot cake. Leon, tender meat, medium. No rare meats. If you would have seen ending it all, during the semifinals, you would find out that Pico is into raw meat because of the toxoplasma. And there was a strict rule in the Falcon House saying, unless if it's cold cuts, every meat has to be cooked, either medium to well done because it'll cause like road rage and things like that. For EAD, spaghetti, eggplant, parm. Kate is coffee, sherbet, and veal. Yugi is bocce, chicken or beef. Fried ice cream, either chocolate, vanilla, or banana. For salmon, it's miso, either tofu or seaweed. And dashi soup, either sea vegetables or mushrooms. I always love the Japanese, the Japanese soups. Very nice. And jelly, ugh. Spaghetti and meatballs, lasagna, steak, turkey, sushi, hamburgers, hot dogs, nachos, soda, Baked ice cream, filet mignon. As a person who loves to eat, he listed a plethora of entrees being written off the invitation. Tinsel was surprised, but Rick was more somber as he questioned if he remembered Bert's limitations of up to three entrees per person. While Dr. Stewart and his family would make the excep exceptions and exceptions. For Serenity, there was fruit slushies and souffle. For my coconut cake, Taya, toss salad, fruit salad, jello, Tristan, nachos and hibachi, mokuba, ramen, tenderloin, favorite of Kaiba. I actually made that up. For Roy, it's curry. As a robot, Roy can't eat, but rather has to be refueled. He did decide on curry with his son, though. And it sucks when you're a robot. For Clank, it would be curry and chili. For Terry, Digiboy Getter from AX, it's chili, preferably spicy, rice pudding, either with cinnamon, raisins, and vanilla. Elias and his mom decided on the exotic mangoes that he likes. Tinsel complained since the mangoes are inter interplanetary, they could be pricey too. Rick stated that maybe Roger and Drac can help. So, for Goro, there's rice balls and oriental vegetables. He'd make them personally, translated from his native language via Falcon's computer program. Well, the invitation was translated. For Lisa, it would be snake and seaweed. They decided on kale instead. The arrows, Mr. Arrow preferred crazy ideas involving angel food or strawberry shortcake. Mrs. Arrow argued they must choose wisely for Archer, like non-chewable ideas. For Zuck, Pet Owl, Bird Seed, or Pumpkin Seeds? Berries? Ugh, I wasn't sure with him. Roger and Drac would offer to help for deliveries of food and supplies. A cooler loaded with ice would be set aside for cold beverages, even soda, a variety of juices, seltzer, and iced coffee. Whew. Glad that's done. Several years back, my family and I had to make some arrangements for a former acquaintance's wedding, who was Indian, the ones that had a red dot in their heads, specifically the bride. The cake itself was actually made by my ex-stepmom herself. She always had a thing for culinary arts, and each layer was both baked and covered with layers of icing of the corresponding flavor. There was chocolate, then vanilla, and strawberry on that. Ironically... It wasn't celebrated in a church, but rather at her own backyard, as was my parents' wedding as, as well back in mid-August 2003. At the yard, 
There was this small arching and flowers were decorated over it, hence the inspiration of the decor. The little robot I was referring to, Tech, despite the fact it was the geek's name in the English dubs, I like Clank better, was his assistant as he would pilot the Dragon Bird EX like he did in Climax, I believe. But that's only the beginning. So, stay tuned for the next lap. Whoops. Until then, this is Econ Writer signing out.